what better place to have breakfast than Great. the MoMA. We planned <laughs> it ahead of time. Oh, this one's yours. How did I do that? This is just a go-to. You have to come here. Mm -hmm. You know, get refreshed and get it all figured out and go on from there. Yeah. You know, until you walk in front of a piece that suddenly grabs you, uh, you know, you haven't really experienced art. There's, I mean, there's tons of work, not, not all pieces grab, but when you find that one out of 10 or 20 or that one artist who you really connect with, it's amazing. Sometimes when you get up in the morning, you get up, you are thinking about so many things that you want to do. And when you walk in into gallery number nine, and you look around you, you look at one side, it looks dark. And you look at the middle, you see, you know. And I went back, I remember a couple of years ago, I was looking into Monet. And I found out that this painting was actually, was dated back to the 20th century. I think it was 1899. And then, um, and then I think Monet died in 1926, if I recall correctly, it's been a while. But look at it today, what was painted over a century ago, we're still deriving pleasure, happiness from it. Sometimes when something bothers my mind, when I walk through this gallery, sometimes I will just sit on one of the benches and I'll be looking. And if you look from one end to the other end, you will see something different and something that kind of console your mind Something that makes you feel like, you know what? This is kind of impressive. I like the Impressionist, Van Gogh, Matisse. I also like Klimt, but I uh, asked uh, there were borrowed the, the masterpiece of Klimt that they have here in MoMA. So today I'm not going to see Klimt. I'm upset. Well, next time. Well, I was studying a little bit of history of art in my country, Peru. Uh, so I have my all my my stuff here. The next, I like Calder over there. I don't like so much, but it's good. Perhaps there are uh, masterpieces that you don't like but if they make you feel something, it's okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi. Um, my name is Devin Malone, and I'm the Public Programs Fellow in the Education Department here at MoMA. Welcome to Art Speaks. Art Speaks is a day of community where staff members choose works of art on display and discuss how they resonate with those works. And then we follow it up with Q&A. It occurs every last Tuesday of the month. Today I'm introducing Paola Antonelli, the Senior Curator of Architecture and Design here at MoMA and the Director of Research and Development. And she'll be talking about the hoodie. Thank you, Devin. It was a great introduction, and it's true. Uh, we pick objects that resonate with us uh, as human beings, not only as curators. And more than resonating with me, I live with this object, as we all do. So let me give you first a little bit of introduction about this exhibition. You are in an exhibition that you know is called Items, and it's about the 111 items of clothing that had a strong impact on a New York-centric world in the past hundred years. It is an exhibition about uh, people. And it's an exhibition about how garments and fashion interact with people and enable people to express themselves and to live in the world. So there are many different examples in the show of everyday items like the white t-shirt, like the Levi's 501s or any kind of sneakers, and then there are examples of high fashion from Yves Saint Laurent to Cavacubo all the way to Armani. So there's a little bit for everyone. I like the uh, stone and the water. And they have a new sculpture over there. Well, I haven't been. I yeah. just arrived. Yeah. Oh, this sweatshirt, I just 
reported uh, just in Algonquit, in Maine. Uh, I saw it uh, there, and what I like about it is that it's faded, not the And I thought it was an adequate uh, statement for what's happening in this country. I came here with the um, four, four, 1976. Went through Reagan, Clinton, Clinton, Bush, Bush, <laughs> and Obama. And I thought it was a great country to live in. I'm not sure any longer. And this is my way of expressing my thoughts. I think I'm going to stand here because I like this one and I like that one. Yeah. My name is Kaolai and he don't have English name. Ge Yu Yuan. It's a Chinese name. Dai Yuan. <laughs> <laughs> I come from uh, Beijing and uh, I'm an uh, actor. We met each other in America but uh, we have a similar, similar experience in China because he was in Beijing and I have been to Beijing a lot of times and our hometown in China is very close to each other, only around four hours by driving. <laughs> <laughs> we just meet each other on the street. <laughs> is that okay? Art can change our life, especially it depends on how you treat art and how you treat your daily life. You can think more. Same thing, you will think more than the other people. My name is Manish Engineer. My last name is actually Engineer. My uh, father was an engineer, my grandfather was an engineer, and I work in the IT department. And so now you are all here to hear me talk about art. So hopefully this will go well. Um, thank you for coming. I'm here to talk about this Franz Klein painting, uh, number two that he did. And why, why did I pick this painting? So for me, this was kind of the start of my journey into art. Uh, in junior high, I took a school field trip to the Cleveland Museum of Art. And I saw this painting there, not this painting, a uh, painting by Franz Klein there, and it was just unlike anything else I had ever seen. And I thought it was beautiful. It was just, it wasn't like a realistic painting. It, it wasn't, uh, it looked like kind of like Japanese calligraphy and the color was different. The brush strokes were just so big and different. I was just captivated by it. And I, I thought it was beautiful. And I think I was about 16 or 17 at the time. Around that time at 17, I had a very like life traumatic experience. I had this open heart surgery. It was like a big thing. And afterwards, I was just thinking about it. And I told my dad, you know, I wanted to go back to the museum and see this painting. And I went there with him. And I walk up to the painting and I see it. And I'm staring at it. And there's this woman uh, in a wheelchair next to me. And the two of us were staring at this painting. And she just says to me, it's very powerful, isn't it? And I, I, I felt like, I, like we were on the same page. And we shared this moment. And it was just beautiful. And just looking at these paintings, they kind of like draw you in. And I, I just, I fell in love with the work. And then of course my dad eventually made his way there. And as I said, he's this mechanical engineer, very practical guy. And I'm like, hey dad, here's the painting. This is like this beautiful work of art. And my dad, of course, goes, mm, no, not, not good. I don't like it. And we like walked throughout the museum and we got to a, George, a painting of George Washington. And my dad goes, see, this is a good painting. It looks just like George Washington. And because of that, it like made me like this abstract expression is even more. The fact that my dad hated it, you know? It's like everything when you're a teenager. <laughs> the title is either Black Widow or Spider, but I think it's done in 1959, but the, just the, the concept isn't actually that abstract. I think when you look at it, it's pretty clear what it is. I do want to go in, kind of in through it. Obviously, I'm not that tall. I think people are like, if they think they don't know enough, then they feel they shouldn't experience it or they won't experience it properly. And I think it's whatever you get from it. And if you get a good experience and you want to go deeper, then you can go deeper. But I think that uh, people can relate to it at all different levels. I may not be interpreting this right, the way that sculptor whoever made it to be interpreted. But at the same time, I think he knows that whoever will look at it can interpret it whatever they want from it. 